Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to be doing my Q&A video. So uh, in my last video I asked you to ask me some questions, so here it is. So I have the questions on my phone, which I will be reading them off and answering them as I go. So you guys had quite a bit of good questions and some pretty tough ones. So I'm going to try and get through all of them and um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> all right, so the first question is from Kirsten's house. And she asks, what do you like to do in your free time and what is your beauty regimen on your days off? So. I am one of those girls that I wear makeup almost every day. As you can see, I don't wear, you know, like crazy like lashes and all that on a daily basis. Definitely not my style, but I do wear kind of like a concealer or, you know, a BB cream or something like that every day. No matter if I'm kind of just doing errands or even if I'm like just staying at home, I always do that. Like that's something my mom always taught me that you always put on your face and you always make your bed. So that is something that I, to me, like I literally feel sick if I don't do those things. It's like, what is wrong with me? Why couldn't I get myself together to do these two things? I don't know. Um, so I always do that at least. If I'm not going to be working and I guess it depends what I'm going to be doing. If I'm going to be doing something fun, obviously I want my hair to look as good, if not better than it does at work. Um, if I'm just going to be um, going around doing errands, then I either like to wear it up. So yeah, simple, but I do wear something on my face daily. Okay, so next question is from Natasha White, and she asks, if you've ever had to deal with depression, how did you deal with it? I've dealt with anxiety basically as for as far as I can remember. Um, and for a while, I used to think that anxiety was depression because anxiety does bring out weird emotions and weird feelings that you don't even know why you're feeling. But I think as I got older, when I actually like understood what depression is and seeing friends kind of going through something like that, um, I don't think, honestly, I've ever gone through like a deep depression. If I had high anxiety, it's normally because something was happening in my life. So, you know, there was kind of a reason why that was happening. And I think from my understanding at least, depression almost kind of can come and go when there's not really like a reason for like depression to be there. I think in my like hardest times, maybe like my highest anxiety and all of that, honestly, like what keeps me going is, and this sounds weird, but the older I get, the better this gets. And honestly, thinking about death helps. And I know that not to sound morbid and really weird, um, but like as a child death scared me and that's where a lot of my anxieties came from but sometimes when I start to think like oh my gosh this is so awful how am I gonna get through this like I just hate the situation right now um, I always think like you know kind of the alternative or basically when it's all over like you're dead I, I think for me just knowing that there is an end kind of like catapults and makes me want to do better right now because I feel like right now I have, you know, control. So if things are bad, I'm probably not working hard enough. So I feel like in a way, I think just really taking charge of your life and really like not blaming anything that's going on in your life and on anything or anyone, I think that actually brings you a lot of happiness because then when you do start to feel better, uh, whatever it is that, you know, you need to get to or what whatever it is that you need to do to to get yourself to feeling better um, once you do do that I think you feel this immense um, feeling of you know accomplishment and excitedness and that wow you know like I went through that like nobody helped me and here I am um, so really I think thinking of death and also your family so I'm sorry I don't have this like a magical kind of um, step or thing that I do that just gets me, you know, out of that, but great question. So Sarah Bella Beauty asks, where did you go to cosmetology school? You mentioned you were from San Jose, so am I. Awesome. Um, yes, yeah, so I grew up in San Jose and I went to the Redken Academy in Santa Clara. So if you're thinking about going to cosmetology school, I definitely highly recommend it. I do have to admit that while you're in school, um, a lot of girls, myself included, complain about the curriculum, complain about so many things. But honestly, once you are out, once you're going through state board, once you do hit, you know, that first salon, like you do realize that 
wow, like I actually did get an amazing education and I was very, very well prepared for this. So definitely, definitely recommend that school. All right, so Annie Hinman asks, where does Adam work? Or what does Adam do for work? Um, what besides cosmetology would you like to, would you like or love to do for work? So Adam's in advertising and that is why we kind of joined forces and kind of created this YouTube channel. He knows all the marketing, he knows the lighting, he knows the filming, he knows all of that. And I come in with hair expertise. So we figured how can we combine those two efforts and kind of give something to, to everyone. So that is what he does. If I was not doing something related to cosmetology, I would probably be, probably be doing interior designing. Next question is Claire Williams, and she asks, what has been the most difficult time in your life, and how did you overcome it? Um, and then the second question is, do you think media puts too much pressure on girls to look a certain way? So I'll start off with that one. Honestly, as any woman in the world, we always think like, I wish I looked better, I wish I was five pounds lighter, I wish I had this, and whatever. Like, I, I don't think there's any woman on earth that just like walks out of the house and is like, I'm gorgeous and I'm just perfect and I just like love myself. Um, even I think on a daily basis or even like in a day's span, your opinion of yourself can change so much. You can wake up thinking, oh great, to then 10 minutes later, you're like, I hate my hair and why does my face look like this? And million other things. So I am obviously no different than that. Um, but I think as like growing up, I think because I was so into hair and like a beauty and beautiful things and I always looked at it as like those are beautiful things and I never looked at it as like competition, which sounds really weird, but um, I looked at it as inspiration. So when I look through magazines and girls would say like, oh, you know, these models are too skinny and stuff. And it was like, well, I don't have to look like that. But that's just like an inspiration, like clothing on her, like looks really good because she's 5'10 and 110 pounds. Um, and not that I aspire to be like that necessarily because I'll never be 5'10. Um, but I think there was something like so beautiful. So something almost so like untouchable and I'm really into stuff like that. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I love hanging out with friends that are smarter than me. I love hanging out with people that have more money than me, just stuff like that. Like, I don't get jealous of other people's lifestyles, so I think like being surrounded by like good people or you know people that are doing really well or people that look amazing like that gives me inspiration. Like that gives me almost like a high. I don't know. That sounds maybe really weird, but so and I think that came for like my love of like like editorial pictures, like something that's not like every day. Like when you look at like runway, that those aren't wearable looks, but you get inspired. So um, I think that's kind of how I feel with like life. And that's kind of how I feel about like Facebook and just social media, like put out positive. And some people are like, you know what, this isn't me. Like I have bad days and blah, blah, blah. And of course we all do. And I'm not in any way trying to project that my life is perfect. But I think what you do put out is you put out good because you want to inspire people to, to be good. If I tell you like, oh, my day was awful and like, you know, all these awful things happened to me, like someone else that doesn't really know me on a personal level really want to read that. I mean, I don't know, that's, that's just my opinion. Um, but I guess to answer that question is that I, I don't think that media should change based on people's insecurities. I know that I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for this, but I honestly think that, you know, once you're happy with yourself, um, I, I'm definitely, I'm not saying that like I'm at my happy weight or whatever, um, but even if I'm not just like seeing like this gorgeous Victoria's Secret model in a magazine, does it make me more depressed of how I look? Do you, I mean, if that makes any sense. I feel like I compete with myself and I compete with like, you know what, I to be healthy and to be happy, I need to be five pounds less. That's my competition is I need to lose those five pounds like for me, but not to look like that or like her. So I, I love inspiration and I love this almost sense of not real life. Um, and so, I mean, I enjoy it. So I, I don't think that that needs to change. I think we need to love ourselves, but like I said, like every other woman on earth, you're not gonna love yourself every moment of every day. But you know, just overall, if you're overall happy and proud of yourself, I think that that should be enough. 
All right, and then back to her first question, which was, what was the most difficult time in your life and how did you overcome it? And honestly, I probably feel like I'm still going through that. And again, it's weird because it's kind of like around the time I started doing YouTube. And obviously that's not what my channel was going to be about. Um, and I try and deal with it as good as I can. Um, but, and there's lots of stuff, a lot of parts of my life that honestly, if I were to sit down and really tell you the whole story, I feel like it, it would make for an interesting story. It, it's pretty crazy. Um, and I don't want to get emotional because I feel like if I do, you know, bring up all this stuff, it's definitely going to trigger some emotions in me. Um, and I don't know that I am completely ready to share the whole part of me, but I will say why I've been going through some tough times and why my health has been, hasn't been at its greatest. So about three and a half years ago, my dad was in a really, really bad work accident. Um, it was so bad that it, it literally is a miracle that he's alive, um, to, to say the least, I think. Um, and he, if you see him today, he, he looks completely normal. He, you know, he can walk, he can speak and all of that. But um, it's just changed him completely, like as a human being, like his personality is different. Um, it's just, you know, when you're so used to using your whole body, you almost take it for granted. And then when you, you know, are, can only use your body like to, you know, say 20% of its capacity, it's really, really hard for the brain to get used to that and to really accept that. Um, and then for the whole family around, them it, it's really difficult to um, and I think the reason why it is so difficult is the fact that he he was probably not to exaggerate or not to um, to say such nice things just because he's my dad but he was probably like the most like hands-on person he's the most helping person and um, and to now not be able to do that because his hands you know, were broken into millions and millions of pieces. Um, it's it's just, just really hard. And I take my, you know, hands on, like I love to work with my hands, you know, I do hair, stuff like that. And I take, I definitely take that hands on and that artistic sense from him. And I know how much that makes me happy. So I can't even imagine him no longer having that ability. And so obviously that breaks my heart every time, you know, he can't do something he loves. It breaks my mom's heart, and in turn, it breaks my heart seeing that my mom, you know, is so sad about this. So, it's definitely, definitely been a tough, tough time on my whole family. Um, it's, there's other things involved too that are not very nice. I just feel, um, you know, it was a work accident, and I feel the people at work didn't treat him the way they should have. And so it, all of those things just add a tremendous amount of stress to just to, to the already awful situation. So I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, not that I have any that I know of, but um, it's, um, it, it's crazy how your life can literally like in one day just completely change. And um, I always just try and look at the bright side and I, you know, um, I try and think, well, like, at least I have my dad, at least he's here, and it could have been that, you know, that day I woke up and he was fine, and, you know, I come home to, you know, my dad is no longer here, so I think that gives me comfort in knowing that God gave me a second chance, or gave me a, an opportunity to, to, to be with him, and to hang out with him, and to have him in our lives, um, and this happened just a few months after Adam and I got engaged, which is the reason why so many of you ask for wedding pictures, and that is why there's not been any that I've wanted to show. Um, but anyway, so that, <laughs> I feel like I literally just spilled my soul onto you guys. But um, so anyway, that that's the main thing that's been going on, and that's... Um, 
obviously that like trickles on into my life and um, even though I live in a different city, even though I'm married now, um, I feel like even that situation sometimes will, you know, even bring on a fight with Adam and I just because obviously when you are sad, when you are, you know, stressing out, um, and when you have a situation in your life that you cannot change, that's so tough for me. I always feel like, you know what, things aren't great today, but that's because I didn't work hard enough, it's because I didn't do enough, tomorrow I will do more and tomorrow it will be perfect. But this is one of those situations that this is what you're presented with and, you know, just deal with it. So um, it's really, really difficult. And um, I, you know, pray and send out my love to anyone that's going through anything, you know, similar to that or worse than that. Um, it's just family matters, especially when you really are close to your family, are a very, very big deal. So. Um, anyway, if you're still here, if you're still listening, thank you so much for um, listening to me. And um, it actually feels kind of good that I've, you know, been, that I'm being so honest with you and finally being open about something that is such a big part of my life lately. So thank you so much for listening to that. And so I guess how I deal with it is really just being thankful for the blessings I still have and really not, you know, just trying to make the best of it, trying to enjoy every moment with him, with my mom, and trying to just, you know, not take life so seriously, because if you think about it, it's not. Um, and really just trying to enjoy every day with everyone in your life that you want in your life. So um, I, I guess that's as much as I can tell you, and that's as much as I feel that I deal with it, so. So the next question from Oki87 Ashy. They ask, have you ever had a client cry because of their hair while in your chair? I've never had a client cry in my chair. I've only had two problematic clients through my career. And the first client, she came to me saying that she was a licensed cosmetologist and that she knew everything about hair. All her lingo seemed like she really knew what she was talking about. And she wanted to go from um, like brown dyed hair um, to a much blonder balayage. So I explained to her, like, I haven't worked through your hair. I don't know if there's color in here. And she assured me there was no color. And I said, I still don't know how it's going to lift. We'll definitely like lift as much as we can. And then I will have to tone and um, do whatever it takes so that you leave here looking, you know, great. Even if it's not as light as you want. And she said, no, I want to go as light as possible. I will do as many appointments as it takes to get me light. Um, and I'll do whatever it takes. And she's like, I just moved to the city. I am not working. I will literally be at home. So honestly, just get me as light as possible, as quick as possible. So I told her that I would only do this to her because she was a hairdresser and because she understood the process and that I would lighten her as light as possible. And however patchy, however, whatever it came out, that that's how we would leave it and not tone and not put another color over it to make it seamless and flawless. And that, you know, in two weeks we would schedule another appointment and then we'd go from there. Instead of backtracking us a little bit to have her hair look great for two to three weeks and then me having to lighten through that toner and through that color again, if that makes any sense. So she totally agreed and she said, yes, that sounds perfect. I'm going to be in my house. I'm not going to leave. I just want my hair to, in a few months, to be as bright as possible. So we agreed on that go ahead and do that. I did her, I gave her just a very light toner just to remove some brass, but she did come out very patchy. Um, I honestly didn't feel like I had to turn her around and show her everywhere she was patchy because we had gone over that consultation. Well, anyway, I showed her her hair. She loved it, or so she said. And two weeks later, she comes back and asks for a refund and that I left her hair very patchy and that how dare I as a stylist do something like that and that basically I was trying to get away with all these things and I said I will not refund you because this is something we talked about and I, I would be more than happy if you the next day were like you know what I can't do this I need it toned come back and I would do it um, but the fact that she went off took care of it on her own she basically um, went somewhere else and they charged her obviously and then she wanted me to to refund her when um, in a way I made the hair easier for that next person and obviously I mean the whole point was the fact that we had gone through this in consultation 
and so basically she had a change of heart and that was supposed to be my fault and I was supposed to refund her. I am more than okay with refunding someone if that's what we both come to terms. I feel that it's it's a diss to the stylist when the stylist has worked so hard and the stylist has worked hard to get you what you asked for. Um, so if say if like the stylist you know tries again the second time and it's still not what you want um, and then you guys talk about it I'm all for refunding you but this was just a special situation in its own way um, so so that, that like that's my worst story that I have um, and it's so she probably cried at home or so she says she did but um, and not in my chair so um, just being honest that that is honestly the worst thing that's happened to me um, I've never melted someone's hair off. I've never um, I don't know I think maybe the worst was someone came in and asked for like a kind of This was years ago, but she wanted like shoulder-length hair and I gave it to her and She kept saying like a little bit more off a little bit more off and it was finally to the point that it wasn't touching her shoulders and then she freaked out. So that that's the, like the one thing you feel like you can't change because with color you can always kind of change, but with length obviously I can't grow your hair back right there. So um, those are probably the worst two things that have happened and um, the lady was like, eh, it's kind of my fault. I kept asking for shorter, shorter, shorter. So this is where I am. So it's still, you know, it ruins your day. It makes you feel awful because technically you were the one cutting. So, um, so yeah, that's, those are my worst horror stories at the salon. So Smerica asks, have you always been so pretty? Oh, thank you. And high school pictures, please. Well, I will insert some high school pictures here so you can see. Um, I was definitely darker hair in high school. And so I guess you be the judge. <laughs> All right, so this will be the end of my questions. I definitely have a few more questions. Maybe in a later video I will get to those. But before this video gets insanely long, I will just go ahead and end it here. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so by clicking right here. And also, I wanted to give a shout out to my little cousin who watches. He's so adorable. His name is Jaden. So hello, Jaden. <laughs> Hope you're watching. And thank you to all for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye!